Tonight, are Xbox reviews paid for? Is guest blogging dead? And can Dogecoins fund Olympic glory? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show six for January 20th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 270,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right to the tech feed. Microsoft may be paying gamers to promote Xbox on YouTube. Nothing wrong with that. Trouble is, the promotions are presented as objective content. In other words, they're paid ads masquerading as fan videos. The promotion appears to involve a deal between Microsoft and the gaming site Machinima. The site's users were allegedly offered $3 for every 1,000 views of videos containing at least 30 seconds of Xbox One game footage and also mentions of the Xbox One by name. A leaked agreement required video creators to both say nice things about Xbox One and also not disclose that those nice things were bought and paid for, according to a report on Ars Technica. We're still waiting for Microsoft to clarify their involvement in the promotion. Google Web Spam Chief Matt Cutts put guest bloggers on notice today. In a blog post in video, Cutts said that if you're going to use guest blogging as a way to gain links in 2014, well, you should probably stop. He said that because guest blogging has become more spammy, he wouldn't recommend relying on guest posting, guest blogging sites, or guest blogging SEO as a link building strategy. And if Matt Cutts says he doesn't recommend something, that means Google search is probably going to sink it to the bottom of search results. Cutts did say that high quality guest blogging posted for editorial rather than promotional purposes is probably okay. Verizon customers are getting an inexpensive new wireless data plan. Verizon's $60 per month share everything plan starts tomorrow. It's cheaper than the cheapest current Verizon plan. $60 will buy you 250 megabytes of data and also phone and text service. Adding devices is cheap too. A tablet costs $10 more, an LTE hotspot costs $20, and each additional connected device sets you back another five bucks per month. But the new plan isn't for heavy or even moderate users. They'll charge you $15 for every additional 200 megabytes. The offer is for a limited time only, and the change is seen as a response to T-Mobile's aggressive plans and pricing. Well, coming up, calling all Dogecoins, the Jamaican bobsled team needs your help for the Winter Olympics in Sochi. And also coming up, CNET editor-at-large Tim Stevens. But first, let me tell you about 99designs. 99designs connects all types of people looking for great graphic design with a global community of over 270,000 graphic designers. Whether you need a new logo, mobile app, business card, t-shirt, or any other kind of graphic design, you'll find the right designer for your project at 99designs. Here's how it works. Tell 99designs what you need, and dozens of designers from the community will submit designs created just for you. You'll love seeing the ideas roll in. Give the designers your feedback to help them refine their designs, and then select and pay for your favorites. Do you need fresh marketing collateral? 99designs offers all kinds of marketing design. Get a sleek, affordable email template, banner ad, infographic, or even vehicle wrap design. You can even start your next graphic design project for as low as $199. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 and get a $99 power pack of services for free. A power pack gives you more designer time and attention, uh, and 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in 99designs Marketplace, and you'll get nearly twice as many designs. Visit 99design.com slash TN2, and we thank 99designs for their support of Tech News Tonight. Well, I'd like to welcome Tim Stevens, who is editor-at-large at CNET and who writes a feature with a focus on engineering, design, and product creation. Thank you for joining us, Tim. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Tim, you wrote a fascinating piece for CNET Saturday about a Croatian teddy bear. What's that all about? Yeah, thanks. Uh, that was uh, definitely one of the more interesting features that I had the chance to write uh, at CES this year. It's kind of the feature that I've wanted to do for a while now at CES, but I've never really had the time to do so. But uh, if you're familiar with CES, they have uh, an area in the, one of the uh, 
one of these zones called Eureka Park, which is basically where they bring together a lot of their startups. There are a lot of interesting companies there. It's my favorite place to go at the show because it's where most of the innovation is happening. You know, if you go into the, the main areas at CES, you see a lot of big televisions and a lot of cool cars and things like that. Um, but if you're looking for really interesting new inventions and, and new innovation, uh, a lot of that's happening at Eureka Park from the smaller companies. So I was walking around and I happened across uh, this device called Teddy the Guardian, which is basically, it, it looks like any other stuffed teddy bear, which is by design design, but in the paw, it has uh, basically uh, what's called a blood pulse oximeter, which if you've ever made a hospital stay, it's the thing that they usually clip on your finger and it reads your pulse and your blood, blood oxygen levels. They can tell how you're doing basically to make sure your pulse is okay and that you're getting enough oxygen. Um, and that kind of thing is a little bit intimidating for kids. You know, if you're if you're a young kid and if you're in a hospital and you're scared already, uh, somebody clipping something on your finger is not necessarily going to um, make you feel any happier about the situation. So uh, the, these two entrepreneurs from Croatia found that uh, a lot of nurses were using teddy bears to kind of get the kids calmed down and they try to sneak the thermometer in there or this blood pulse oximeter in there and then the kids would get scared again. So what they did was they built it into the paw of the teddy bear. So now all the kids have to do is hold the hand of the teddy bear and it reads their pulse, uh, which which makes things a lot easier for them. Uh, the big news is that the bear doesn't cost any more than a sensor alone. Uh, and so they're seeing some good traction already. They want to have a consumer version out by the end of the year. So it's kind of a neat story of how uh, two entrepreneurs in Croatia managed to get all the way from Croatia to to Las Vegas, which is certainly quite a journey with uh, with kind of a nice, a simple, but a very, very interesting uh, creation. That's fantastic. And it's also great that you're bringing a lot of attention. Your uh, article got a lot of traffic. And so it's it's really wonderful to see them doing what you're what they're doing and to see you bringing attention to it. Thank you so much for joining us, Tim. Certainly. Thank you. And finally, the Internet's favorite bobsled team is raising money through Do Doge coins. It all started after the Jamaican bobsled team learned on Saturday that they had officially qualified for the Sochi Winter Olympics. Unfortunately, they were broke. They needed $80,000 to cover travel and equipment. Then the Dogecoin subreddit stepped up and asked for donations to fund the team. They raised over $30,000 in Dogecoins in three days. Add this to the funds from Indiegogo and CrowdTilt, and these groups have raised nearly $60,000 for the team so far. Good luck, Jamaica. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv tn2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Mike Elgin, and good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.